Hey, what's going on? I got something a little bit different for you today. A little bit exciting because because it's a mixture of economy and holy crap, this is nice. So I'm a little excited to bring this to you. The it's a it's a rake. It's pronounced rake, but it's not spelt rake. Right, it's a Chinese company. And I'll give, uh, I'll show you the tag that it came with. That way it's clearer. It's a Chinese company. This is the model number. Oops, went the wrong direction. P108. If you're interested in the model. And I'll just flash the specs up here for you, so I don't have to yak about them. Excuse my dirty fingernails if you noticed them, and now you will if you didn't before. Um, I was working on my dad's truck, and uh, they're going to be stained for a few days, so bear with. I like my fingernails clean and manicured. <laughs> but, uh, oh, sorry, okay, let me not shake here. All right, so yeah, it's a frame lock. And, uh, Let's just go through this really quickly. It tells you here, guarantees a lifetime against any defects in, in all the materials and workmanship during the service life. Then it says, please do not adjust the screws independently, means don't do it yourself. The factory defaults are to stay in place. Product warranty, 15 day replacement, right will replace identical or equal products if the same one is out of, is out of stock with documented manufacturing defects within 15 days of purchase. Five year free repair. Reich, 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 okay, whatever. Reich will repair a knife free of charge within five years of purchase if problems develop with normal use. The warranty won't cover misuse, abuse, disassembling and other man-made damage also Oh, where did I go? Oh, also, the normal wear and tear, color, abrasion, holster, and other accessories are not covered by this guarantee. Lifetime maintenance. If repair is required after five years from the date of purchase, Rake will, achar Rake will, will charge for parts. The total repair fee is dictated by the cost of the replaced materials. All right. Comes with a warranty card. You, they tell you to fill it out when you have a problem, not beforehand. And it comes with a little brochure with some of the other things they have. They got some slip joints, some multi-tool knives. These are made out of a lower grade stainless. This is made, they're made out of uh, Sandvik 12C27 blade material. Rockwell hardness 5859 tungsten uh, steel breaking cone okay but I don't want to talk, talk too much about it. so here's the other side of their folding knives just a quick little zip up the thing and they got some fix and they got a couple of fixed blades all right and everything on this side is made out of uh, 14, 14, was it? 14, oh, I was trying to remember it without looking. 14C28N, yeah, that's the uh, Kershaw steel. And it's the Sandvik, uh, it's the, uh, the, um, the Swedish Sandvik steel. The model is a P108SF, I think I showed you the model number ahead of time, that's right, okay. So, thing rides on ball bearings, all, and they said in the, in the manual there that all their uh, flippers ride on ball bearings. Um, stainless handles made out of, uh, what was it again that did they, did they say? Um, blah, 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 blah. It's the lower end one. It's the other Sandvik stainless. But you know what? It's better, I'll tell you right now, it's better to have a stainless frame flipper than a titanium one because you don't need um, inner washer races to protect the, the titanium 
from the ball bearings. So this will be a more durable knife than a titanium knife because titanium is softer than steel. Now, it's a liner lock, um, a frame lock, and it has a secondary lock so that you don't, if you, for some reason, you need extra, extra strength, extra security, uh, it's not going to come down on your fingers. Uh, the pocket clip is a little blingy for me. I don't like that blue, so I'm gonna mask off the um, mask off around the the clip and just buff that because it's already start. Looks like it's already starting to wear down. So I'm just gonna hasten that and just buff it clean and have it just all same color all across. I'm a minimalist, so I like that. It's got an aluminum aluminum backspacer anodized black and it incorporates a lanyard uh, hole in the back and one thing that's quite interesting is notable about this blade is that top swedge that top swedge is curved the bottom part of this grind is curved but the top part of the blade is absolutely straight as a as a laser but doesn't that give you the illusion that it's a trailing point that's awesome came pretty sharp uh, do I got sharpness test paper around here an old Jehovah's Witness magazine that I found in my mailbox yep and this is um very light paper I didn't touch this blade this is factory blade factory edge see if I even get if I start like to to cut paper you got to start with a slice but a really sharp knife will cut paper even if you just hammer it like that and there it goes it's just just taking off shards no problem this is a sharp knife and let me explain something while I clean this up is that All the grinds, if you look at all the machining, all the grinds, you know, all the, all the symmetry, when you look at the symmetry at the tip, you won't, I won't be able to catch that for you on camera. But the symmetry at the tip, the symmetry of the edge between left and right sides uh, is absolutely, absolutely flawless. Like sometimes I see, like you see this, um, the flat here there's just a little tiny triangle wedge here of, of flat blades still left over here right and then it and then it terminates right here at this point what I like to do sometimes just because I'm OCD like that is I like to find out where it terminates and find out if it terminates exactly in the same spot on the other side and boy does it ever the thing is bang on like crazy and I have to say embarrassingly embarrassingly high workmanship and why do I say embarrassingly because I buy things like the zero tolerance 0452 titanium beautiful knife see I'm a swedge lover I love that big swedge you know what I mean so I'll just give you a size comparison between the two this one's got a four inch blade this has got a three and a half inch blade. Oh, and that's another thing that I that I forgot to mention is that these um, stainless steel slabs are milled out on the inside like crazy. On the show side, it's milled out all over the place. On the on the uh, the lock side, it's milled out just like a little square up here and a little square over here, just to take weight off. And you know what? It's it's a pretty light knife because steel is much more dense than titanium is, and uh, will weigh heavier. You know, uh, if you took an equal dimension block of steel, an equal dimension block of titanium, the titanium will weigh less than the than the steel. Steel's denser. So anyhow. Um, so they did a really good job shaving weight off this thing. Um, it's fantastic. I am absolutely impressed, guys. Like the machining grinds, the like the relief bevel. 
You can see very light machine grinds, it's very light. Like crazy nice. Crazy nice. And I'm not easily impressed these days. I'm a little bit of a, I wouldn't call myself a snob. It's not, I'm not a snob because I don't, I don't uh, poo poo other people's knives. You know, like a lot of people love to slam other people just because they don't have a knife or a, a thing that they have. I, I'm not like that. So I'm not a snob in that respect. But I do like and appreciate my higher end materials, higher end workmanship, higher end everything. You know, you just, it's, it's an evolution, right? But, um, so these days I'm not that easily impressed. And wow, am I impressed. It's smooth. It's got a good detent. And it fires. And if you do like a half switch and half push button sort of deal, where you load up on the pressure, bam. Wow. Did I tell you the secondary lock? Yeah, I did tell you earlier. Sorry, my mind's a little bit flighty today. It's got a secondary lock on the titanium. If I didn't, I'll just repeat it again. On the, sorry, not the titanium, on the, um, the stainless uh, frame lock. So you, you got a safe, uh, a safe situation here should you need it. You know, relatively, relatively uh, safe without it, but um, still, it's good to have. It doesn't need a lock insert because it's stainless steel. So it's already it's already good in that respect. And it comes with that warranty, so there's nothing to worry about if things start to wear down. So yeah, this is a really good little knife. Oh, and let me tell you the price. $56 Canadian. So like, I mean, if you translate that into American, it, we're like, you know, give or take, we're around 72, 73 cents on the dollar compared to the American. So um, you can expect this to be around 30, 40 bucks American. And it's budget, but it doesn't walk like a budget and doesn't talk like a budget. This thing is awesome. Okay, let me do a little shameless plug here for just a moment. Just for a size comparison, and at the same time, a paramilitary two that I did a little customization for a friend. It already came with this titanium clip. He already bought it and sent it with me because he wanted me to match the clip. He wanted me to match the, the blade and the hardware to the clip. Same tone color and same you know, finish, which is a stonewash, natural tie, fin uh, stonewash finish. So, I did that for he. Now, the way I see it in my viewfinder, it's not coming out right, and you're not gonna be able to see it really well. Let me move it so that the light can catch it in different ways. And I'm pleased how it came out because I've never uh, never worked with S35. I've had S35 VN, but I never worked with it. So I didn't know how it was going to turn out. And I was very cautious and I gave him like a thousand messages. Are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you want to do it like that? Are you sure you want to do it like this? Do I have it right? I'm being redundant. I know I'm being a pain in the ass, but hey, <laughs> I've got to know. I got to know. Are you sure? Maybe the, maybe the logos will be completely erased. I don't know. But the, logos, the logo came out pretty good. There is some fading in the, in the edges. But the, because this is a shallow laser etching. And the, um, this is a, the, the stampings are a deeper laser etching. So you still can see the, the two signatures. Eric and uh, Sal. Eric and Sal. Um, and you can see everything on the knife. So it's still pretty good. And I, uh, I, I did the liners to match the blade. And I did the hardware as well. And I'll just give you the standard one as a comparison to show you the diff. Just to give you a little quick. I wasn't gonna make a whole new video for just this knife or these knives, so that's why I'm just sticking it in here. Sorry guys, that's why I said shameless plug. All right, that's enough. 
But there you go, there's your size comparison. PM2, I'm doing a Nick Shabazz today. Sorry, Nick, but you sometimes you, you know, you give me good ideas. Delica 4. And just for fun, because I like to be funny and have fun. <laughs> My monster Recon 1 XL in XHP. P, 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 P. No, I don't got a P. All right. So, yeah. But, so, if I were to compare these two knives. Because, you know what? I have to say. These have to be quite comparable. Does this look like closer to the... The uh, 0450, yep, it looks pretty close to the 0450, except for, you know, handle. Handle's completely different. It's a whole different knife, different design, different kind of swedge, different kind of everything. But when you say generally, yeah, they're, they're pretty close to looking knives. I mean, like, how many times can you make a knife without, you know, looking like another knife, right? <laughs> so anyway, um, they're pretty comparable. And as far as smoothness is concerned, it, it won't do this. Like, the ZT is just... And the ZT has a longer blade, so it's going to have more um, inertia, right? So it'll do, the, it'll do a nice drop, no problems. Um, oh, and that's another thing about this, the ZT. I have some... some uh, I don't know if you can hear that. Listen. Hear that? It sounds like a little bit like a ratchet. No, not that time. It depends where the bearings are. Not that time either. It's nice and smooth now. Anyway, depending on where the bearings are related to the inner washers, there's some peening. Remember the, the problem with the Spyderco, uh, Gail, uh, the Gail Bradley Spyderco, um, uh, I have it and I forget the name, <laughs> uh, Advocate. It had a big problem with the washers peening. Well. This seems to be having that same issue. I don't know if it's an individual piece. Yeah, yeah, I know. Warranty, send it in, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but um, I haven't heard anybody else complain about it, but I'm hearing this in this knife. I might have to take it apart and take a look. So um, there's that, like I was telling you again, stainless steel is not going to ha have that happen very easily. You'd have to, like, you know go to town on that that screw and really crank down on it to to peen the to peen the the surfaces the inner surfaces so yeah just a little quick intro and like i said i am utterly impressed utterly impressed and look at how that blade disappears the top of that blade is completely flush with the with the handles here you can see just the top of the blade here where the finger finger cut cutouts are and I have like uh, medium just a little slightly larger than medium hands they're 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 not as long as they are wide so a lot of guys you know when they when they clamp down on a knife they go I got a huge hands well my hands are big this way they're not so big this way so um, yeah, they're great for clubbing. <laughs> but yeah, um, just to give you an idea, you know, I can get all four fingers with some knife behind it, left behind. It's a comfortable knife. It's good little gents. Wouldn't call it hard use. But you know what? There you go. There's a little... I bet you if I play with this long enough, it'll, uh, it'll start to smooth out. I didn't even lube it yet. This is like straight out of the box. Oh, and by the way, if you guys are, you know, those of you who care about boxes sorry I just bumped the camera if you guys care about boxes like I said it comes with the the, the instructions comes with the warranty card comes with a little brochure then it comes with a decent cardboard a uh, thick walled cardboard box with the you know the the sponge inserts you know slip on box it almost feels wooden but it, you know it's cardboardish it is cardboard but yeah um, and with the slip sleeve. Oh, and that's another thing that I wanted to mention. This is the company that makes the Phoenix, the Phoenix Light Limited. The Phoenix Light. So I'll just flash that so you can get all their stuff at Dongfang Ming Industrial Center. Here 
Here you go. It's good enough. So repeats on the repeats on the uh, sleeve. So I gotta say, like guys, I don't know what to, you know. I'm feeling embarrassed because I have a bunch of these high-end knives. And when you think about it, two hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, and you're like, you know what? These are good knives. I'm not saying they're not good knives. They're not. They're. they're I'm. I'm not. I'm not saying that they're not good knives. But let's just take a quick look at this. The grind is a little off. Not bad. I can't, like, I can't say, oh, look, this is hor horrible. It's not horrible. The grind is not horrible. But if you really want to get OCD crazy, it's a little off. But not by much. Just the grind. Everything else is bang on. All the other machining is bang on. Uh oh. Spoke too soon is I got to check if sometimes you got to move the knife around because the light depending on which way the angle of the light hits it could look like a knife is off like I, I've held it up to a light and it looked like the tip was like going over and then you move it around and you're like oh no that was just the light you know the tip tip was fine but if I look I got a real keen eye eh? I got like an engineer's eye I got a mechanic uh, machinist's eye the shoulders of that contour is not exact but you know what again like I said by eye it looks absolutely fine but if you were to really take a good look it's not this swedge part this part of the swedge grinds up just a little higher than this part and it's and again you'd have to study it as long as I have just now to see that This is, I'm telling you guys, this is a, you know, A-OK, -okay, 100% knife. I'm not knocking the knife. I'm not. But if we're doing a comparison, holy smokes. Holy smokes. The knife is bang, bang, bang on. I don't know what it is. They, they, they take care of their machines better. I don't know what it is. Because, you know, like, after so many knives, after so many cycles, things start to wear down. And there's uh you know there's some tolerance in in their see this is zero tolerance that's kind of ironic but there'll be some tolerance in their clamping systems in their machine shop you know their uh, all their different things you know there could be some tolerances that make some inconsistencies so maybe i can only i can only guess that maybe they they keep they upkeep their machines better i don't know i don't know all I can say is that this knife is way tighter than that knife. Okay, sorry. I used the word way incorrectly. It's not way. But this knife is tighter than this knife. Okay, that, that's a definite. This knife is tighter than this knife. And that's a lot to say when you're talking about all the R&D that goes into something like this. All the advertising and the hype that hype, up, hype it up for like a couple years before they knock, they, they knock it out of the park. Then they bring it out, and it's superb. The word is superb. Okay. But when you say this is 200 bucks American, and this is 35, 40 bucks, let's just go 50 bucks maybe, depending on where you buy it, American, that's an embarrassment. So, yeah. Um, I just wanted to make it. I'll cut it here. What, where are we at now? Uh, we're at 17 minutes. And if you've been with me this far, you're awesome. I love you. Okay, guys. Peace and love, okay?